ball handlers. You've got to get those guys moving and angling to make the big fillers use their quickness. Second and seven. Burkhart going up top, but he is sacked. First sack of the game for the Giants. That's Damian Dumonceau's eighth of the season. Good coverage downfield as Dumonceau was able to close. Right here, they got a little misdirection. He's got Drew Hanley, his tight end, coming across the middle. But Dumonceau beats his man one-on-one -on -one and comes in and makes a great tackle on the sack. He just beats him with a speed rush. It was a long-developing player, a long-developing pattern downfield. Gave Dumonceau a chance to work one-on-one. -on -one. He took advantage of the opportunity and made a big play for the Johnnies. First-year starter, second-team all-conference. So on third and 15, a timeout is taken by Mount Union. Mary Karras wants to be sure about this call. And Karras very much in control of this offense. The one thing that I've noticed a little bit about Jesse Burkhart where the St. John defenders can start tuning in on is he's really staring down his primary receiver. That time Hanley was in his sights and that's the only guy he went to. He didn't come to the second option, held the ball, then you got a sack. And the defensive backs honing in on that as well. Coming up tonight, ESPN and ESPN2, your home for college basketball's Las Vegas showdown. First, Ernest Shelton and Alabama take on Luke Jackson and Oregon. Then flip over to ESPN at 12.30 a.m. Eastern time for UNLV and Auburn, the Las Vegas showdown on ESPN and ESPN2 this evening. For more information, log on to ESPN. Two teams met three years ago in this very building for the national championship, and Mount Union was a big favorite. Went up seven to nothing on that play. St. John's came back to tie it, but then with one second left, there's the game-winning field goal, and Mount Union wins it 10 to seven at the very end there. You saw that was a quarterback, Tom Miniman, for St. John's sat on the field for a while. He's now a radio analyst for St. John's and a very entertaining one. Third and 15. Up top and was it short hopped? We're going to say it's a catch. The linesman says it's a catch. So that's a great job of Healy concentrating, bending his knees to go down and get his hands underneath the low throw and securing the ball. It's a great throw by Burkhardt and a great catch by Healy. Again, the number of weapons Mount Union has, you'll see right here, this is an excellent execution of getting his hands underneath the football and securing the catch. First down, they needed 15 yards and they got 16. So first and goal now from the three. Ciccone bounces off the tackle and then goes down. Good defense that time. Jeremy Gold's coming up on the bounce. And a good job by Cam Cambridge right here, knocking the player, the blocker, back into the back. You'll see Cambridge coming from his linebacker spot, scraping. Watch this. He's going to be big number 77 in the middle. Well, that's Cans actually does a good job of avoiding a block, knocking the ball carrier outside, playing good discipline defense to your on block player, securing the tackle. Excellent linebacker play from Gans. And now second and goal, you see Mount Union has scored in every first quarter this season and they have less than a minute to keep this one alive, to keep that streak alive. And the play clock goes all the way down to zero. That's on the coaches. I see Coach Karras over there, he's pointing to himself. Five yard down. That's substitution. That's on coaches. They've got to make a decision on who, what players they want, what personnel they want in the game, and put them in. First penalty called against Mount Union. Boy, it's a big one, as they are now pushed back to the nine-yard line. Mount Union's making a few uncharacteristic mistakes right here early on. A penalty down in the red zone. You know, they had the ball to start. Down there around the two-yard line, they're backed up to the eight. Coming up now on the 12th play of this drive. They've already gone 65 yards. Underneath pass is complete to Knapp. And he keeps his feet going, stretching for the end zone, but is marked just short. Randall Knapp is 6'4", 220 pounds. 
Almost got it in. That's his first catch today. That's a great effort by Knapp right here. Now, this is what they call the slip screen or quick screen. You see the offense line and get downfield, try to get ahead on somebody. Gans comes in and only gets a half a man. The Knapp falling backward has the awareness of where the field is, where the goal line is. Look at him try to reach to get that ball in the end zone. That's outstanding effort. That's a young man playing for the national championship right there. Fifth in the country for Recep receiving yards per game and for the first time this year Mount Union has not scored in the first quarter. Championship Mount Union has gone 73 yards so far on this drive and has it now third and goal and they get it in Ricky Ciccone. And Mount Union, which just went through its first scoreless first quarter of the season, scores on the first play of the second quarter. A good job of blocking up front and a nice lead block by Miller, just giving Jaconi enough time to sneak in there. First of all, you get the big fellas up front knocking people off. Miller gets a job on the linebacker, Cambridge, and Jaconi just sneaks it up in there running nice and low, not presenting a target. His 11th touchdown of the season on the ground. George Wilder's in, and his extra point is blocked. St. John's getting up in the middle. Cam McCambridge, the talented linebacker, the ball's still alive. And St. John's comes up with that block. Low kick. The extra point ones, you got to get up in the air because you don't have that far to kick it. Cambridge got up, but I know he's not a... He's a great athlete, but I don't know, he's, he's not a vertical athlete where he can jump 50 inches in the air. Watch right this, he'll push himself off the defensive line and he'll get up and get that left hand up there. That's a low kick. That's just about six inches above the offensive lineman's head. He's got to get that ball up in the air. Looks like his foot dragged a little bit and Cambridge does a good job of awareness, timing it perfectly and getting the left big ball up there, knocking her down. Could be a factor. First career block kick for McCambridge. And indeed it could be. So Mount Union has to settle for the six points on the touchdown by Rick Ciccone. The kicker's got to get the ball up on extra points. Never should the ball be blocked up the middle on an extra point. So Mount Union takes this six to nothing lead after a 74 yard drive that chewed up about six and a half minutes of time. They are well ahead in the total yard department, 110 to 19 now, but just up six to nothing on the scoreboard. 56 rushing, 54 passing. That's balance. Chad Teague with the kickoff. Elliott, sore hamstring and all, still the return man. He had a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown earlier this season. And that one, he takes out close to the 32-yard line as we send you back down to Dave Ryan. Well, Pam, we asked Larry Karras how he approaches the team's remarkable success. The 55-game win streak winning 109 of the last 110. He keeps it simple by keeping busy in season. He says there's no time to reflect back on the great accomplishments, his 7-0 record in the Stag Bowl. He says each game, each season is like a new chapter, something to look forward to and not to remember. The theme for these guys is not where you've been, it's where you're going. It keeps the motivation and focus going for Mount Union every week. That's right, Dave. They just have to take it one game at a time because if you look back on their success, it's staggering. Tice with a huge gap up the middle, and Jake Tice takes it all the way down into Mount Union territory. By far the biggest play for St. John's today. Pam, it's the same play we saw with Nelson. Again, it's the misdirection. You get both backs flowing one way, you come back with a draw the other way. When you, you run that play, when you have a fast pursuing defense like the Purple Raiders, it's an excellent play call, and you keep repeating the play until Mountain Union gets it fixed. They'll come back to it again. Tice with a 19-yard run, gets it down to the 49 of Mountain Union. Keating holds on to it. And he is knocked out of bounds around the 35-yard line by Matt Capone. Watch Brian Mathison come out here, number 64. See the guard, he'll pull and he'll get a hat on a defensive back. There's a good job of blocking downfield. Mathias blocking, blocking a defensive back, and Ryan Keating knows what to do with it. He's a smart kid, he'll make decisions. Now remember, he's calling all the offensive plays for St. John's. 
He's in the huddle. It's like Sandlot. Hey, you run down to the fire post and take a right. You go to the park <laughs> car and take a left. And by the way, boys, let's run a little option while we're at it. Good look at Mathiason. Again, all five offensive linemen are first-year starters for St. John's. Mountain Union was offsides on that play. Obviously, that penalty was declined. So another first down for the Johnnies. Josh Nelson, the running back, bottled up after about a five-yard game. Same play, Pam. We talked about it. The misdirection set backs one way, you give them the other, and it comes back running away from the flow. You get a five-yard game. That's a bread and butter play right there. Nelson, a very good player. You see his 11-game career in the NCAA playoffs and a very versatile player as well. Now Jim Gillardi, the offensive line, the offensive coordinator, says a lot of what St. John's does offensively is predicated on Nelson's versatility. Very important player to the St. John's team. Now second and five. Give it right back to him, and not much going on there as he has stopped for maybe a one-yard game. Jason McElhaney, the senior from Pulaski, Pennsylvania, making a stop. Now Spizak, also from his middle linebacker spot, an All-American this year in Division Three, getting a good read on the ball. Filling the hole nicely and making a tackle at the line of scrimmage as opposed to making it three and four yards down the field. Spizak not only all team, first team all conference as a player, but also an academic star as well. Good speed in there for the senior middle linebacker. Third and four for the Johnnies. Keating wants to go up top, escapes, has to run for it, and picks up the first down. So Ryan Keating, showing his escape ability, picks up six, first down Johnny's. I'll tell you, Ryan does a good job of recognizing no receivers open down the field, understands he's got a stiff wind in his face, and has great eyes to pick up the hole. Right here, see Ryan's gonna come, he's got his backs checking out for outlet receivers, they're covered. Right away, he puts his head down, doesn't panic, knows where the first down marker is, and does his smart thing in getting down and not taking the shot. Keating actually started his collegiate career at the University of Minnesota, played two years there as a walk-on basketball player, and then uh, transferred up to St. John's, pitching it to Tice, and Tice loses a yard. That's a bad read right there by Ryan. He knows it too, I saw him put his head down in disgust with himself because it was a bad read. He knew that Tice had no chance. Sometimes when you're running option, you gotta be safe with the football, secure the ball, just stick it up in there and get a yard or two. That time he pitched it, tried to make something happen that was not there, ended up losing the yard. And again, if you're just joining us, St. John's has its quarterback call his own play. So Keating, there's nobody shuffling in plays. It's all on the quarterback's shoulders. Second and 11. Zipping it and completing it. Isaac Flenner, the tight end, with the catch, stopped about four yards short of the first down. A lot of spread offenses. Teams will work the backside of trips. What do you mean by the backside of trips, Chris? Well, they have three receivers to one side. The tight end right there, Flenner, is split out by himself. He runs a simple curl route, does a good job of adjusting the ball, catching it with his hands. Beautifully executed, great catch. Good call, though. That's a, that's a football 101 play now. A lot of teams will do that. Put three to one side, work the back side, single receiver side. Pointer's first catch today is 21st of the season. Now third and three. Blitz coming. And Keating fumbles it. St. John's able to fall on it. Luke Schumacher was able to fall on it, but boy, great pressure. By Mountain Union, that's Tony Buckler coming up. Yeah, Tony Buckler coming right here from outside, comes on touch, he beats the offensive tackle, who's trying to get out late and does a good job of stripping the ball. Not just getting tackled, but stripping the football. You see Tony come right in your pitcher. Bam, gets that right hand in there, secures the tackle with his left hand, strips the ball with his right. It's a good hustle back there of getting the fumble recovery, not giving the turnover up. That's exciting. That's a way to make a play, Tony. His speed beat the offensive tackle because of the width he was lined up in his defensive position. The offensive tackle was not able to get out and get him. And because of that 19-yard loss, no choice but for Charlie Carr to come in to punt. And it takes a great St. John's bounce and is killed down inside the five-yard line. So Carr, nine of his 41 punts coming in today were inside the 20, and that one's inside the five. So Mount Union holding on to that six to nothing lead as we play for a national championship.
by Alex out handling. Nothing lead over St. John's here in the second quarter. Coming up Monday at 5.30 Eastern Time, more football. Phillip Rivers leads NC State against Kansas, which is making its first bowl appearance since 1995 in the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Coverage begins with College Game Day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 5 Eastern, all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Phillip Rivers very quietly had a terrific, terrific season for the Wolfpack. Phillips, top three or four quarterbacks in the country. Great player. NC State, the rather, you know, not the season they had anticipated, but uh, Rivers had a great one. Rooney back in at quarterback, gets around the corner, and skips out of bounds around the nine-yard line, picks up four. Cole Dybul coming up to uh, make the stop. Dybul had two brothers who played football at St. John's. Really a whole big family tree of guys who have played for John Gallardi. He's been there for 51 years now. Well, you can understand why Coach, with the success that he had, obviously he, he would like uh, the siblings, the young kids of his former players to come because they understand his coaching philosophy, they understand the system. They work and fit right into it perfectly. On second down, Bruni looking to pass. Gets it down to one of his underneath guys. That is Brian Miller, his fullback for the first down. Picked up 11 on that play. Okay, let's go down now to Dave Ryan. Dave. Well, we asked John Gallardi some reasons to account for his remarkable 413 career wins. And as you guys were just talking about, he posts loyalty to the program, a big part of the Johnny's success. That playing at St. John's has become a family tradition. In fact, this year he's coaching 18 sons of former players, second generation St. John athletes who want to play for the legendary coaches. Eight of his nine assistant coaches, guys, are Johnny alums. Seven played for John Gallardi. Including his son, Jim Gallardi, who is the offensive coordinator as Bruni carries it up for another first down. Paul Gans making the stop. And, and John Gallardi, that guy is, is a legend. And you see the records by decade, Chris. There's no slip in this guy. <laughs> records by decades. I mean, uh, you can understand two of those decades with the hell <laughs> going back to the 40s now. Right. Man. This is the sixth decade in which he is uh, coached. Or it's the seventh. The right. seventh. That's a long time. <laughs> so much that I couldn't even count. <laughs> wow. First and ten is uh, Bruni's really gotten him out of that deep hole, but that field position struck. It is bottled up. Cam McCambridge coming up to make another stop. The senior from Medina playing well early. Yeah, Jeremy Hood actually makes this play happen. Now watch Jeremy Hood come from here, and he's going to get penetration, forcing the ball to bounce, leaving Cam on blocks. See, Cam just kind of scraping and weaving his way through traffic, and that's all set up by Jeremy Hood and Dumonceau for coming in there, knocking the blockers back, forcing the ball to run the hump. Then Cam just comes over the top of the hump and makes the hit. And you like to see that nice little defender, that nice little hump made by the offensive lineman. Make him run the hump. Hood is a really, really good defensive end now. Up top, Bruni trying to get some yards back, and he gets him all in one chunk. First down, Nick Sirianni with the catch. Well, I'm really impressed with the Mount Union quarterbacks and how they're delivering the ball on time, especially on the outcuts. And they're throwing strikes. And they're sitting in the pocket. They can throw on the run. They'll throw the strikes. They'll do, do what they got to do. And he delivers that ball on time. And again, an excellent job of pass pro by that massive offensive line of Mount Union. Bruni actually led Division Three in passing efficiency during the regular season. Jesse Burgard would have had he had enough pass attempts. <laughs> but he missed three games late in the season with a bad toe. So these guys just don't mess up. Plenty of time. And Bruni going to take off. And he steps out of bounds after picking up about three yards. A good coverage downfield by the Johnny secondary that time. Well, he's having a lot of time to throw the football, and they're trying to just get pressure with three and four guys, and Mount Union's doing a good job of keeping them out of there. But again, uh, the presence and the pocket awareness of both quarterbacks from Mount Union are not going to make silly mistakes. They'll take it because they have feet, and they can run. So they're not going to make a mistake, try to force one in there. They'll get five yards with their feet, and line up, and play again. That time, Bruni got six or four yards with his feet, making it second and six. Again, minimal pressure, but good coverage. Hood pursuing Bruni, a flag is down. Could be offensive holding, Bruni 
running for the tentative first down. Well, they got Kennard with the with a big head slap there. They got Hood. He's just protecting his quarterback. And sometimes those hands get a little crazy, but Kennard looked right to the official. The official right to Kennard. The official nods yes, and, and Kennard kind of put his head down like a kid being scolded in school. <laughs> yeah, I got it. It was me. Sorry about that. Jeremy's got his hands full out there with the big fella now. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Uh, Jeremy's given up about, I don't know, 100 pounds. But you'll see Hood come off the corner right here, and here's the big fella that's going to get called for the holding. Here comes Jeremy on a delayed rush. Kennard gets him inside. Right there, he got him with the claw across the back of the head. The big claw, you're not allowed to claw people. Use your hands inside. If he had his hands inside, he'd been all right, but he took the claw across the back of the head. Well, good. That's two penalties on the offense already today, Chris. Mount Union averaging under five penalties per game. And already two so far, and we're not even halfway through the second quarter. Green retreating, and he goes down. That is a huge loss. Paul Gans coming in to make the big sack for St. John's. Well, we talked about that St. John's was having difficulty getting pressure with just four guys. Coach Hagan, the defensive coordinator, says, yeah, you're right, Chris. Why don't we come with five? And here comes Gans from the inside, untouched, because he was hiding behind one of his defensive linemen. It was a blown assignment up front, and Gans comes in and does a good job of keeping his feet and running through the ball carrier, not to the ball carrier. Excellent job of tackling, a great call, getting pressure with more than four guys. He's got to pick and choose when he does that because when you bring more, then you're leaving your defensive backfield without help. Third and 29 after Gann's first sack of the season. It was a big one. So what do you do on third and 29? Try to pick up a little bit, and it is thrown just slightly behind Drew Hanley, the tight end. He couldn't bring it in. So St. John's coming up with a big stop on defense, and their fans are up on their feet. Yeah, I, I, I like this Cam Cambridge. I'll tell you, he understands football. He's back there about 20 yards from the middle linebacker, taking away the deep square and getting a hand on the ball and knocking it down. And again, we're updating this uh, punting differential. Mount Union going to punt for the second time today. They only had 21 in 13 games coming into this. Well, they got a guy coming in late, too. I'll tell you, I'll try to block it. I'll see if they got their protection now. They're only punting 22 times a game. I'll see what they have for protection. Caleb Chapelier in. Oh, they got close to him, but he gets it away cleanly. Blake Elliott grabs it, loses it momentarily, but falls on it, and St. John's will start from its 36. So the St. John's defense with a huge sack they get the ball back and we'll be back to Sam one pill a day 24 hours zero heartburn the NCAA division three championship brought to you by PlayStation 2 the wind is whipping through the air here in Salem Virginia is uh, John Gallardi trying to win his fourth national championship in in first since 1976. St. John's only down six to nothing against mighty Mount Union. Blake Elliott, the ball thrown behind him, and it's uh, ruled incomplete as we send you down to Dave Ryan. Dave. Well, Pat Blake Elliott had just an unbelievable season this year. 1,268 yards, 13 touchdowns, four touchdowns rushing to win the Gallardi Trophy as the MVP in Division Three football. Had the drop there, has not had a lot of offensive exposure. Despite the fact we have high wins today, that's one big factor, but Look for him maybe to run a little bit out of the backfield. That happened early in the playoffs, guys, this year. Second half, Coach Gallardi ran him out of the backfield, 100 yards plus in the second half from that spot. We'll see what changes more to get Elliott more touches. Yeah, that was the fact he has no catches today, Dave. He had 136 yards on the ground against Linfield as that is dropped. Fred Riggleman is there as uh, Elliott had 136 yards. They put him in the backfield against Linfield two weeks ago simply because he was being doubled and triple teamed and they couldn't get him the ball as a wide receiver. Yeah, they need to start making some yards on first and second down and put themselves in manageable third downs. And, and try to get Blake Elliott involved in the offense as Dave pointed out. He hasn't been involved and he's their best weapon. Now don't forget though, he's playing about 75, 80 percent. And just watching him walk out of the huddle, he's struggling a little bit and limping. It's tough to be a receiver and play with a bad hammer. He did strain that hamstring two weeks ago and tweaked it last week. Back to Elliott. 
makes the catch with swarming defense by the Purple Raiders led by Ken Whitfield. It's a good job of Whitfield reading the screen pass, playing good field position, coming up and making a tackle. Didn't fall for the shake and bake from Blake. But secured the tackle and hit him square. Well, Elliott at least gets his first catch of the game on that drive, but it's a three and out. Charlie Carr in for his fourth punt already. As great as Mount Union's offense is, their defense is just outstanding, giving up only six points a game and batting about 28% third down efficiency. So Carr, who along with Blake Elliott, the only two guys to start that game against Mount Union, the championship game three years ago, and the wind simply knocked that oh, punt man. down. Boy, it looked like the, the abominable snowman, somebody really tall, just knocked it down. An 11-yard punt. When we come back to Salem, we'll take a look at all of the no's of John Gallardi, the no's that turn into a successful program. Wait, whoa! Guys, it's Christmas! NBA on ABC. Christmas doubleheader. Mavericks, Kings, Rockets, Lakers. Tuesday at 10, 9 Central. From Mount Union. Burkhart taken off. Flag comes down behind the play. Five-yard gain for yep. Burkhart, but a hold that's coming back. And they got Big Larry again on the hold. Well, let's, let's keep, now keep this in the memory ricks right here. Gilman comes in and look at the awareness to get that ball. Strip it out. Here comes a hit from up top, and the ball is out. And his knee is still off that ground. That is a fumble. That's a tough call against the Johnnies. It's a close call. It's a difficult call to make, but it's one that you can't make a mistake on in Division Three National Championship game. And Thielman is a guy, as Kennard was uh, called for that last hole, Thielman is a guy who suffering from the flu and uh, playing uh, very sick. But, uh, boy, came up with a big play there. But, unfortunately, they did not get the correct call by this officiating crew, and Mountain Union holds on to it. He was in the hospital last night, Pam, till like midnight getting IVs. Now let's see Burkhart coming back. Pressure up the middle from Hood, and he goes down. Jeremy Hood with the initial pressure. That's the third sack as Ryan Wynock closed in on it. Jeremy Hood's a football player. Well, he's weighing about 250 pounds, and he, he, I don't know if he's that big. You see Jeremy come in on a little X game or me game. Comes with a nice rip, got skinny, split the double team, and forces the quarterback to take a knee. But excellent technique. He uses a rip technique. He turns his shoulders and gets skinny when you got two guys down. And Burkhart's down on the ground. And Burkhart leaving the game, and... Zach Bruni comes back in. That's a luxury, though, not needed to have two starting quarterbacks. So they go back to their other starter. Time as Gans and Hood pursue him. Desperation throw, and it is incomplete. Healy was the uh, receiver in that spot. Remember, Burkhart missed three games during the earlier part of the season with a foot injury, and he is down on the sideline now for Mount Union. Pam, let me tell you the, uh, again the philosophy of Coach Karras. The first quarter, they were going into the win. What we saw was a lot of the power running game. The second quarter, they had their win to their back, and they could throw the football. But St. John has done a good job of getting back into their zone coverages, getting great depth, and they're getting pressure now with four guys led by Jeremy Hood. And when they want to bring a fifth guy, they seem to like to bring Gans the middle linebacker who has a knack for rushing the passing. All right, Chris, third and 29. Blitz coming. Oh, Bruno just got it off and is picked off. Intercepted by Jeremy Goltz, his sixth of the season. And again, we talked about bringing pressure with the fifth person. That fifth person being Gans, number 33, the linebacker. And he gave a shot to Bruni. See right here, Gans will come from his linebacker spot right through there. Again, he's on block because the fullback released. He's got to stay in and hold it. Then you come up with a big pick. You want to win a championship? Make a diving interception, you'll have a shot. Craftsman has come up with another smart solution that simplifies projects and saves you time. The Craftsman Speedlock Drill and Driver System. 
This patented speed lock quick connector is the heart of the system. It fits any drill and works with keyed or keyless chucks. The speed lock's simple click in, click out action makes changing bits so easy you can do it with one hand without rechucking. Speed lock lets you do even more with this combination drill driver. It's eighth touchdown of the season, and St. John's can take the lead if Brandon Keller can knock home this extra point. And he does just that. Well, again, it's the same play they ran before. It's a little bit of a screen. Now, here comes Cass again outside. Now, he has lead blockers out in front of him. Cass does a good job that time. And Tice delivers the blow. Ryan looking away from the trip side. Here comes the screen pass. Great read on the blocks and just getting in the end zone because he wanted to. All right, Dave Ryan, take it away. Coach Karras, first time in 38 games. Your team's actually trailed at the half. How do you respond, you think, in the second half? Well, we've got to go in and, and get our poise, get our poise back a little bit. Made a lot of mistakes in the second quarter, but I think if we uh, talk to our guys, we'll regroup, come out and play real well in the second half. You've been outscoring teams 50-6 to six this season. Are you surprised that St. John's not only is in this game, but leading? We know St. John's real good. They played us just like this a couple years ago, and so we're not surprised at all. I, I think our guys expected a dog fight. St. John's played a great first half, and uh, not not surprising. They've been playing great, too. It's going to be a challenge for Mount Union Pan to win a four-straight national championship. All right, Dave, and Larry Karras, calm as usual, just what we would expect. But, oh, my goodness, this is uh, a Sports Center highlight if I've ever seen it. Jake Tice, what an effort as St. John's takes the lead at the half. Let's go to the college football halftime report. Mark May and Reese Davis. Wow, Reese. Damn well, indeed. St. John's taking the lead. They are playing for trophies. Many NCAA schools are doing so, and we will have a tribute to those schools that have already won championships in all sports. Mark, you know, I'm reminded of when Pat Jones was the head coach at Oklahoma State. He was beaten on a, on a fake punt call that was, seemed uh, an inopportune time to call a fake punt. He was asked after the game, what does it take to make a call like that, coach? He said, uh, long-term contract. <laughs> <laughs> if you win 413 games, you can run a swing pass on the last play of the half. Absolutely. That was a great call. It was a gutsy call. We're sitting here in the studio, and I'm saying, you got to kick the field goal. You have to kick the field goal. You have to get momentum before you go into halftime. But John Gallardi decided, no, we're going to go for it. And then instead of throwing the ball in the end zone, they throw a screen pass, a little swing pass to his back out of the backfield, and they find a way to get it in the end zone. And that's what I love about this football game. It's down to the wire. You're going against each opponent. This is for all the marbles. Why not take a chance? They took a chance, and it worked out well for them. And you know what? We've talked about the no-contact thing that Coach mm -hmm. Gillardi believes in. We've talked about that a lot. But you know what? Jake Tice didn't shy away from contact when he was going for that end zone, did he? He fresh got legs. himself in there. It was <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> it's all about the fresh legs. It's a great game. Halftime of the Division Three National Championship game. 7-6 to score right now. We will go back and look at last night's Division I AA National Championship game, which was total domination by Delaware. We'll also talk about the other schools that have won national championships in their sports when we continue at halftime. Corner and put him one-on-one. -on -one. They have great confidence in their receivers to make something happen. These fans, they had some uh, three charters coming in last night. Lots of fans from Minnesota making the trip to Salem, which is right outside of Roanoke, Virginia. So third and eight, Keating had broken a string of completing six straight passes without incompletion. Pressure from his backside, he feels it. Holds on to football and goes down. Josh Ludwig among the Purple Raiders in there. And Keating is a guy who, under pressure during the season, several times has flipped the ball off left-handed if there's a guy within about 10 yards of him, and that time he decided just to eat the football. Even though they have the win, it's going to be a fourth down go for them. And Brandon Keller is their field goal kicker, his longest this year, 42 yards, 10 of 12 on the season. And then right now, from here, it would be a 50-yarder, so there's uh, no doubt that they're, that they're going to go for it. And Clock, play clock is one. Jim Gallardi called this play. They sent this play in from the sidelines. John's son, Jim, the offensive coordinator. Keating to Elliott. 
makes the catch for the first down. They go to the best player on Division Three, and they get the first down on fourth and 12. They went to the best pass play in football, in my opinion, the fade stop. He's going to run the takeoff, and he's going to get the corner on top of him. Keating's going to deliberately throw the ball behind him on the backside shoulder. And we talked about earlier the timing of St. John's and the timing of the routes. That's two seniors working together as one. Great. The faith stop is impossible to stop. The man-to-man -man coverage, if you run it properly, they ran it properly. They made a key fourth down conversion. And that was Mike Miller out there on the coverage. First and ten for the Johnnies. Up by a point. Now Elliott shows you that he can run the football as well. Blake Elliott, it's going to be first and goal for the Johnnies. Well, Blake's playing with a lot of guts, and he's playing for his brother's honor. Adam, who he's dedicated this game to, and, and tell you, he's playing on that hamstring about 75%. I'd love to see this kid at 100%, because he's a boy dog warrior now. And that's a good thing. Again, his brother Adam was in a horrific auto accident in May, is continuing in a, in a care hospital in Minnesota, and Blake uh, very devoted to his brother playing for him, and has made a couple of big plays on this drive. 78 yards, the Johnnies have gone already. Keaton flips it to Tice. Tice, tackled down by Mike Miller inside the five. That's a great job of Tice holding on to that football. That wasn't a great pitch, and that's what they call the speed option. That time, both Miller and Doak did a great job of winning their individual battles out on the edges, defeating the blocks of the receivers and making the tackle. But a great job by Tyson just getting that football. So now second and goal. And I, see, I see Coach John Gilardi getting in his son's ear, Jim Gilardi. So maybe, maybe I might want to call a play down here, Jimmy. What a pitch. Nelson has thrown the ball before this season, and the ball is incomplete. Oh. Boy, Elliott just couldn't get a toe down. It's good call. Good job by Mountain Union. Defending, I'll tell you, that's a nice throw because Nelson put it only where Blake Elliott could make the catch. Right here, Nelson does a good job of trying to sell the run, lofts it up there, throws it to the back of the end zone, and Blake just had to stretch, and that's a touchdown. If he catches the ball, I don't see if he dropped the ball or not, but he drags his feet. That should be six points. Oh. Right? There, feet are on the ground. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. So a couple of calls, close calls, have gone against the Johnnies in this game. Uh, Spizak wraps up Elliott, and now it's fourth and goal from the five, and now we get our first look at Brandon Keller. And don't forget now, St. John's had a fumble taken away that they recovered in the beginning of the game, and they just got a touchdown taken away from him. His feet dragged it before they went out of bounds. Spectacular play by Elliott, but he doesn't get credit for it. Here comes Brandon Keller, the junior kicker. has hit 10 of his 12 field goals. This is a 22-yarder. And Keller's kick is good. So St. John's has to settle for a field goal, but that was a terrific drive for the Johnnies. Yeah, it's a, it's a four-point swing because according to this replay, it looks like it's a touchdown. See if Blake Elliott drags his feet. There's the catch, there's the field drag. That's six points taken away from St. John's. Craftsman has come up with another smart solution that simplifies projects and saves you time. The Craftsman Speedlock Drill and Driver System. This patented Speedlock Quick Connector is game is a touchdown it's a touchdown in the nfl and keep keep your eye on that because it's 10 to 6. that is a four point swing and, and you, you can't miss that call you cannot miss that in the championship game and you saw the linesman was uh, quite a bit behind the play among those who missed the call is jason cavell breaks away and is out around the 40 yard line as we send you down to dave ryan well, Pam and Chris, as you can imagine, there's some very concerned long faces here on the Mount Union sideline. A lot of the players trying to tell each other they need a rally and get each other psyched up, but they appear a little downtrodden right now. It's been since September 2001, guys, against John Carroll. They were in this close a game. They were down 30-27 late in the fourth quarter, had an 11-play drive, and won it. 
33-30. September 22nd of 2001, last time they've been in a game anywhere near this close. They're down by four in the national championship on the line today. Well, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say, they're, they're national champions, Pam. They know how to win. They won't panic, and their head coach won't panic. Zach Bruni back in at quarterback. Again, Mount Union alternates quarterbacks every other series. We'll see a, a new quarterback, and Bruni is taken down by Jeffy, J Jamie Steffensmeyer, one of two Steffensmeyers on St. John's, twins. Once again, you got linebackers not giving up one for one right there. He just defeated the block of the fullback, Brian Miller, who made the play. I'll tell you, they use their hands well. They don't get caught up and they don't, they don't get hugged up with guys. They, they get separation, then they burst off blocks to make plays. Jamie Steffensmeyer, Cody is a uh, transfer from North Dakota State, came back here to uh, St. John's to play with his twin brother. Plenty of time for Bruni over the middle, and he threw it behind his intended receiver, John Healy. We check in with Dave Ryan again, Dave. Well, guys, in the offseason, the Steffensmeyer twins, Jamie and Tony, were looking for a place to live off campus. After checking out the market, Tony started looking at available lots, and yes, they decided to build their own house. It turns out their dad had built a house, and their uncle had built several in the area. And after they got things going, they said it really wasn't that hard. They didn't do the electrical. They didn't do most of the other hard labor in terms of the foundation, but the walls, everything else, the painting, they did themselves. Dad, by the way, pays the mortgage and the utility bills. And he says it's still cheaper than if he were to put them up <laughs> on campus. So uh, that's not bad. Let's build a house in the summer. Bruni, over the middle, completes it. And Schrock is dragged down well short of the first down. So this St. John's defense continuing to stiffen up against Mount Union. And again, Mount Union is a team that averages 50 points a game. They scored 66 last week when they beat Bridgewater. And what they're doing, Pam, is they're playing great zone defense and they're eliminating the receivers at the sticks, forcing the underneath throw. But all of them get a great break on the football and they come up and tackle well. They don't miss tackles. Once again, Caleb Chapelier in to punt it into that brutal wind, and he gets a, a line drive, so it travels at least a little. And Mountain Union is yeah. saying it hit a St. John's player. Okay. If it did, Mountain Union gets it in great position, but it stays with St. John's. And let's see, the, the ball's not going anywhere into the wind, so you don't even need to block the outside guys that are trailing down the field because something like that could happen. Mike Zahar was in in the path of the football. Let's see if the replay shows it here. Now again, up here, for the official's benefit, we do have the benefit of the replay. We couldn't tell from that angle. Let's take a look closer. There's the bounce, and we might have got him on the left shoulder. Again, we have the benefit of replays, and the officials do a great job. They missed the one in the end zone there. So St. John's holds on to it. Nelson, the running back, picks up about three yards on that first down carry. Take one more shot at it. Let's take a look. There's the bounce. And if it catches him, catches him in the upper body, right on the bounce down right here. Uh, it might have got him. Yeah. I can't tell from this angle there because Mountain Union player was in the way. Nevertheless, Johnny's ball. And the Johnny's, after getting a couple of breaks to go against him, hold on to the football as the third quarter has come to a close. St. John's trying to snap Mount Union's incredible 55 game winning streak. They're a quarter away. Right guard, right to the end of the day. Coca-Cola brings you championship expressions. Coca-Cola, real. As you might expect, the expressions and the emotions are running high here, particularly on the St. John's sideline. They lead Mount Union 10 to six here in the Division III Championship game. Keating with three receivers to his right. Looking there all the way, lofting it too high for Nelson. That was a check that Ryan made that probably he shouldn't have made because he had Flinter down here working one-on-one. -on -one. 
Why you know he checked to a pass play. His running back took two steps up for pass protection. Keating is quite a story in his own right. Here's a guy who last year in the third game of the season shattered bones in his throwing arm in 13 different places and had surgery, a couple of metal rods and pins inserted, and he has come back with a vengeance in this his senior season. Facing a third and seven as the sun breaks through in Salem. Play fake to Elliott. Keating looking across the field. What a catch by Blake Elliott. First down, Johnny's. If you want to win national championships, your star's got to play great and great games. What a play by Ryan Keating, first of all, for finding a throwing lane with his feet. They would come here and they'll fake to Elliott. They've been successful running that play. It's kind of a throwback. Mountain Union does a good job of defending. But Blake Elliott does a great job of adjusting midair with his hips. We saw him make that same catch in practice yesterday. I said, Pam, that kid's an athlete. He is something else, and he told us that he would like to give a, the NFL a shot. And he certainly has a lot of ability, and he's uh, worked on uh, getting his speed numbers down. This time, Blake goes right up the gut for about five yards. St. John's has not had a player in the NFL, by the way, since Rick Bell, a running back, who played for the Vikings in the mid-'80s. Well, again, the versatility of Blake Elliott. They put him at fullback now, and they just hand it up to the middle. And again, uh, Coach Jim Gallardi, who is the offensive coordinator, understands that it's a fourth quarter. I got a senior who's uh, the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy in the, in the Gallardi Award winner. Let me get the ball into his hands. Makes sense to me. Elliott, too, uh, remember, he's also a very talented punt and kick return man, so he would be very versatile. So you could see where some NFL teams would certainly want to give him a good look. There he spins off another tackle. Blake Elliott in the open. Elliott going towards the end zone, and the senior has scored for the Johnnies. What a game. And he's doing it with a, with a half a leg. Don't forget now, he's got a heavily taped hamstring. But he is a strong kid and a strong runner with great balance and athleticism. Why not run a handoff out the middle and make about nine people miss and I'll run people with a half a leg. I can do it. It's a 51 yard touchdown run for the senior from Melrose, Minnesota. Boy, a good hold, the snap was low. And the extra point by Brandon Keller is good. Mount Union has not trailed by as many as 11 points this season. Blake Elliott, his final game as a senior, going out in style. The hand up. I'll spin, I'll take it away. And I know my brother Adam is watching me. Let me score one for St. John's. Let me score one for brother Adam. Blake Elliott with a bad left hamstring has just gone 51 yards, touchdown run to give St. John's a 17 to six lead. They are playing for that trophy, the Division III Football Championship. And Mount Union, which has not lost since 1999, in big trouble. Miller. Mike Miller reversing field, trying to make something happen. And this is exactly what Mount Union needed as he gets it all the way down to the 43 yard line. Yeah, that energized not only Mountain Union's fans, but the bench, because I see the people, their heads were down. You get a big return like Mike Miller just provided. That might provide the spark. Now, seeing what quarterback they're going with, they're going with Burkhart. Watch Mike Miller. This is a great athletic move. Not quitting, not giving up, saying, hey, there's 13 minutes to go in this football game. We're defending national champions. I got something for you. I got something in the tank. A great job of playing hard. It was a 34-yard punt return, but he ran well more than that. Burkhardt zips it first down to Nick Sirianni. Let's go to our Pontiac high-performance moment of the game, and it just happened, Blake Elliott. Now, the, the thing amazing, Pam, is again, he's doing this on one hamstring. He's got a bad hamstring. He says they're taping up so much that he can't even feel it. Was playing with a lot of courage today. It was a 51-yard touchdown run. He had a 60-yard touchdown run in a game earlier this season against St. Norbert. 
But Mountain Union, you know they're not going to quit. The three-time defending champions as that ball skips out of the hands again. Randall Knapp not having the kind of game he envisioned. They have not trailed in the fourth quarter since they played John Carroll over two years ago. That's a 38-game string. They're down 11 right now. You got plenty of time. You still can run the football. I tell you, St. John's has matched up well, and their defensive line have done a great job as far as the power running game goes of eating up blockers. So you got Gans in the Cambridge running all over making plays. And again, they're very much outweighed on the line front. Up there, going to the end zone, and Nick Sirianni was there, but they missed fire with the wind at their backs. Pam Ward and Chris Spielman joining you along with Dave Ryan from Salem Stadium in Salem, Virginia for the national championship game. They have the 16-team playoff in the Division Three. We are down to the final two. The top two teams, numbers one and two in the country. St. John's and Minnesota right now pulling off the upset. Even though uh, you take a look at the total yards, they've really won the battle on the ground. Mount Union has not lost in 55 straight games. They're going for their fourth straight national title. Burkhardt over the middle, completes it. That's a first down to John Healy, the senior tight end from Steubenville. That's a great job of composure by Jesse Burkhardt, staying in the pocket, allowing his receiver to sit down in the middle of the defense. But Cambridge, what he did was overflow. Healy found an open area, and Burkhardt didn't force a throw. He was patient, realizing that he's holding the ball a long time, yet he was still able to deliver the strike across his body. See Burkhardt's numbers. Remember, he had to leave the game late in the second quarter when he re-injured his foot that he had sprained a few games ago, but he's showing no ill effects. Big pileup is Brian Miller, the fullback, is met head-on. Damian Dumonceau was there, as was Paul Gaines. Again, Mount Union, they're champions, Pam. They won how many games in a row, and they will not quit. I know Coach Karras, he will not let these guys quit. They know how to win. They're going to play to the end. 55 straight games, 109 of their last 110 for Mount Union. Burkhardt all the time in the world in the end zone. It is tipped away. Mike Sahar got in front of Joe Puguera. And I think Puguera had a shot at that ball because Burkhardt threw the fastball. He didn't throw the changeup. He realized he had to throw the heater in there. It looks like it went through Puguera's hands. I don't know if the ball was tipped or not. This is a great throw. He steps into it. Oh, that's a good defense. It looked like his hands were on it. Almost. Sahar, the sophomore from Brainerd, Minnesota, getting in the way. He had three picks so far this year. This is a biggie. Third and eight. Now remember, out on the outside, you have guys that are 6'4", 6'5", receivers. Yeah, you. The fade pass could be a big play for them. Burkhardt having to improvise, keeps it, heading for the first down sticks, and he is corralled just short of it. Nick Thielman making the stop. Interesting call now by Coach Karras. You got third, fourth and two coming up. You're down by 11. Do you put points on the board with three and play for the touchdown and two-point conversion? Or do you try to get it all while you're down here? No hesitation. They're going to go for it. One thing you might want to look for is a hard count now. An offside penalty will give them the first down. So now on fourth and three. Burkhart going into the end zone, but no one is open. All the time in the world to throw, and he completes it for the first down to Brian Miller. Wow. It's a good catch by Brian Miller. I'm telling you. Brian Miller, 220 pounds, makes an athletic move because he has to bend his knees and go down and get the low ball. Here comes Brian. See, he's checking for the block, and he says, well, I'll be an outlier receiver. He says, look, I'm over here. I'm open. I'm open. And there's the throw. It's a nice job by Brian Miller of getting past the orange marker for the first down. Again, knowing where you are on the field. Senior fullback, Eric Kara says that he performs his role as well or better than any other player on his team, and he showed it there. First down, Burkhart gets a little bit closer to the end zone. And Cambridge making the stop. And Jeremy Hood, again, penetration. Not allowing the quarterback draw to set up. Two lead blockers forgot to get Mr. Hood. And Eric Harris, when we talked to him earlier in the week, singled out number 19. Jeremy Hood said he's simply one of the best in the country. 
and he does have the all-time sack record at St. John's. Broke that late this season. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Struck is just bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Gans, McCambridge, Cole Dybul, they were all in there. Yeah, Cole Dybul, I'll tell you, he's not the biggest guy out there. He's 180, you know, and if that. But he came up and met the big fella. Watch him. Good tackling. Puts his head down, brings his feet, wraps him up, then let his linebackers come over the top. The Cole Dybul from the safety position feeling nicely on the run. Dybul, six feet, 180 pounds. Third and goal from Mount Union. Lend at their back. Burkhart for Nap, and it's picked off! Intercepted by Mike Zahar! And he is going to go! St. John's pulling off this upset, a 100-yard interception return for the Johnnies. The one thing we talked about is what Burkhardt has been doing. Now, he's played great all day. But the one thing they do is they stare down their receivers. Right there, as soon as he took the snap from the ball, Sahar steps in front. He's running the fastest 100 yards he ever ran in his life. But he jumped on that all over. He had his eyes on Burkhardt. He playing man. Made a great angle on the break, and he's off to the race. So, Brandon Keller in to try the extra point for St. John's. And the Johnnies, nine minutes and six seconds away from taking down the monster. That's, that is Mount Union. You know, Pam and, and Coach Karras knows his team way better than I know his team. But I'm looking at the matchup. I got 6-4 against 5-10. I might have threw the three instead of the out. Through the out, you get that celebration by Johns. On the joint days of Holy Week, my TV gives to me the best college games you'll ever see. There's nothing else like Holy Week, the Yuletide fantasy. Tailbacks are sweeping, quarterbacks are throwing, whistles are blowing, head coaches screaming, boy, down and long. Capital One Bowl Week begins Monday on ESPN. Scatel's Manufacturing Jewelers, Mount Pleasant, Charleston, and Charlotte. The NCAA Division Three Championship, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. Welcome back to Salem, Virginia. Mike Sahar has just run a, t a interception back 100 yards for a touchdown. That's a stag bowl record, a St. John's school record, an NCAA Division III record, all of the above, and the longest ever against Mount Union. And the biggest hurdle right now is Mount Union is down 24 to 6 with less than nine minutes to go in this game. We talked about the one thing that Burkhardt's been doing is kind of staring down his first option. His first option's right here. Sahar's right here. He's playing man to man. He just gets a great break on the football because Burkhardt's staring him down, and all of a sudden, he, all, the only thing he has in his way is green. He says, if I don't trip over this grass, I can set all kind of records. More importantly, put my team up by 18. And that's exactly what he did. So Larry Karras, again, going with Zach Booney, now quarterback as the alternate. The last play for Burkhardt, very forgettable for him, that interception. Mount Union, big mountain to climb here. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage by Matt Garland. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Well, if you're a St. John's fan, no reason to be concerned about being overconfident and taking this win for granted. Just as Mike Zahar ran the long pick six back for the touchdown, a lot of defensive players. Linebacker Paul Gans, Cam McCambridge, Nick Thielman, the defensive back, all got together and said, we have to make a defensive play now, guys. We cannot let up on them. So they're obviously still very much with their eyes on the prize. That is one reason why they've been so successful. Very even keel like their head coach. Pressure there by Darling, but the pass is away, and another big hit going for Brian Miller. 
And St. John's, they don't tackle in practice, folks, but boy, are they hitting today. Well, the kids love to play football. If you don't get to tackle in practice, when you get a shot to take a shot on somebody like McCambridge right there, bam, ball ejected again. That's two ball ejections by McCambridge. 14 of their 24 points coming off the two turnovers today. And McCambridge, the senior, first team all-conference, two-time All-American, playing like it today. Third and ten. Another pick. St. John's, that's Nick Thielman. And the Johnnies are starting to dominate now in this game. Well, they're just sitting back in their zones, Pam. They don't have, they can give up all the underneath routes they want. They're enforcing Mount Union to make the play. And they're well coached and well disciplined. And Thielman's right there just playing catch. I'll take it. You don't want it? I got it. Hold on to that football. Now remember, he was in the hospital last night till midnight. Here's they're gonna run a little corner route. They're gonna flood the area. And Thielman just does a good job of not biting on a deep route, yet he's smart enough. He reads the quarterback again, sits down. Makes a play. St. John's has made a play. Every time somebody needed to make a play, one of their guys has stepped up and made a play. Thielman is a senior, but this is the first year that he has started. He is from St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is right next door to Collegeville, where uh, St. John's is nestled. Blake Elliott continuing to shine. Blake Elliott, they finally are able to tackle him down at the 25-yard line. What a game for him. Well, I, the only thing I'd like to say is I'd pay admission to see this kid play with two healthy legs instead of one leg because he's just running through full. He's just running through guys. And, and th there's a desire and a will not to be brought down by one man. He's shown it today. He's shown to me what Division Three football is all about, the love of the game, the passion of it. Blake Elliott, seven carries for 104 yards and a touchdown. Playing with a lot of heart and a lot of talent. As you mentioned, Chris, this kid is good. Nelson. Antoine Dillard got a hand on him right in the middle of the line as we head towards eight minutes to go as we take you back down to Dave Ryan. Pat, this past week, Blake Elliott logged on to his PC and went to the Mount Union College website. He clicked on a several of Purple Raiders' top players. He wanted to see their pictures and read their bios. Blake says they're normal-looking guys, but as his coach, Sean Gallardi, reminded him, normal-looking guys making extraordinary football plays. But Elliott put it perfectly, guys, before the game to us yesterday. He wouldn't want any other team but Mount Union to be the Giants' opponent. It wouldn't be a stag bowl without them. They're about to be national champs to take it away from the Mighty Raiders. Play the best team out there, Dave. You're absolutely right, and that is Mount Union, but St. John's. Big plays, Elliott with the big plays, Zahar with the big play as Elliott gets it that time and is tackled by Tony Buckler. So Larry Karras' is ball club, I mean, these numbers are, they, they almost seem like they're incorrect because they're so big. 55 games in a row. They've had 83 rushing yards today. That's a season low. Their previous season low was 211. First time they've trailed in the second half in over two years, and the first time a defensive touchdown has been scored against them this season. So a lot of things on the line right now. You can almost get the feeling like you're watching kind of the modern-day version of Hoosiers. I'm looking for Gene Hackman running around on the sidelines now. There's Tyus who scored a spectacular touchdown. You go back to that touchdown to end the first half, Chris, and boy, what a momentum changer it was. It would have been 6-0 Mount Union going into the end of the half, but Tice just bowled over guys. Yeah, and a great job oh. of black, blocking downfield and Justin Cass, the offensive guard. I give those linemen credit to be that big. He's 250 pounds, which is, I guess that's big for yeah, offensive a... guard for St. John's, but he's out there blocking DBs and he'll spring in Tice to the end zone, who took a Mount Union player with him. And again, this offensive line, as it's a fourth and nine now for the Johnnies, who are going to hold on to the ball and try to go for it. This is the first, all five of them, Chris, are first-year starters. That's staggering. And it's, and it's coaching. It's, it's great coaching, and they have their system. The kids buy into it, and they believe it. They don't make mistakes. So on fourth and nine, St. John's. Time out, right? Let's go. One second. Time out, St. John's. They take their second 
They take a timeout here with under six minutes left to go. John Gallardi hasn't won a national championship since 1976. He's less than six minutes away. Leading holds on to it. Mountain Union gets the ball back, but they have a long way to go. And the St. John's fans cheering their team. Big underdogs in this game against Mount Union. So Mount Union obviously has to throw the ball. St. John's is going to be done with the good all game. They're going to sit back in their zones and break on the football, let them catch it underneath. Burkhart in at quarterback again. He completes it for the first down to Nick Sirianni, playing his final collegiate game, a senior from Jamestown, New York. I got to mention Jerry Harden, the uh, defensive coordinator for St. John's, also the uh, baseball, head baseball coach for St. John's. He's done a great job getting these kids ready to play. And because as you mentioned, Chris, I mean, they're just hugely outweighed offensive line to defensive line, and they've, they've outplayed them. Human on the uh, coverage and Sirianni there. Completely. That's a great catch by Sirianni. That's a great catch. There's defensive coordinator Jerry. So I called incomplete. It was complete. It was a terrific catch. Jerry Hogan thinks it was incomplete. Yeah. And you see he's got the baseball stuff on. <laughs> he's got he's ready. He's got practice in three weeks, he said. <laughs> Head baseball coach as well at St. John's. And, and the thing that gets me, that's like January 14th. They're playing baseball in Minnesota. Yeah, he, he doesn't Ooh. wear any headsets either. That's great. Defensive coordinator. He doesn't need headsets. He says, I've been an assistant 28 years. I know what I'm doing. Hogan, uh, 28th season as a coach. He played for John Gallardi. Never left Collegeville as Ciccone gets the carry. No headsets, your uh, defensive coordinator, no clubs. Well, it, they all got their own individual jackets on there down as coach. Usually yeah. coaches look like, you know, part of the team, uniforms. I'm looking at, uh, at Jim Gallardi. He's got his ski jacket on. It's blue. Burkhart breaking free and sliding down. And, yeah, Jerry Hogan almost looked like he was signaling in baseball signals out there. <laughs> he, you know, multi-purpose signals. Saturday night, that's tonight, ESPN and ESPN2, your home for college basketball's Las Vegas showdown. Ernest Shelton in Alabama takes on Luke Jackson and the Oregon Ducks. And at 12.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, it's UNLV and Auburn. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. John Healy with the catch, long play, all the way down to the 15. Again, Mount Union, they're champions. Their coach is a champion. Even though they're down by 18 with four minutes to go, they will, they will not quit. They will fight. Burkhart. That's incomplete. And Thielman has, has played a terrific game as well. He's got an interception today and good coverage that time. And Sirianni. I've just kind of been watching Coach Gallardi down there on the sidelines. And, you know, he kind of just prances up and down the sidelines. He's, you know, he's been doing this thing for about 55 years now. It's amazing. His hands, are, I think I see his hands out of his, no, I thought I saw his hands out of his pockets. But he knows, believe me, he knows everything that goes on both offensively and defensively for the Giants. 77 years old and still sharp as a tack as a map can't get to that. There he is. Yeah, he's, he took his hands out to yell at the officials for holding. I, I read something where Gallardi said that he well, he would like to send some uh, you know Christmas cards to uh, officials, but he can't find any uh, written in Braille. So <laughs> <laughs> he likes to get on the officials. Really, he's the king of the one-liners. And again, John Gallardi and the rest of St. John's, everybody playing for the Division Three Football Championship Trophy. It would be St. John's fourth, but first since 1976. On third down, Burkhardt zipping it, it's picked off again. The third interception of the game for the Johnnies. Paul Dival in his final game as a Johnny gets the pick. Dival from Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. Two of his brothers played for St. John's. His parents say they don't know what to do. They don't have to go to Collegeville to see their kids play anymore after about uh, 15 <laughs> years of doing it. St. John's getting close to the national championship. Thielman playing even though he 
was in the hospital last night because of the flu. And just recently, Cole Dival running it back. Jeremy Goltz had one earlier in the game. And St. John's just all over this Mountain Union team, 24 to six. And now some of the hugs can start to be exchanged on that sideline. Three of those picks obviously in the second half. Well coached football team. They seem to know what Mount Union's doing. They're breaking down the ball. Great job. And the two quarterbacks have thrown two apiece as Elliott slips down. Burkhardt has thrown two. Zach Bruning has also thrown two for Mount Union. And these guys literally don't know what it's like to lose. There is one guy on this team, Mike Miller, a cornerback, is the only one who was on the play, the playoff roster the last time they lost. There he is, number 13, the only player out here who knows what it's like to lose at Mount Union. Well, it's, it's tough, and I, it, you know, what can you say? They've had an incredible run. Coach Karras has done an incredible job. The kids have played hard. St. John's has just made plays in key opportune, key opportune times. Guys like number two, Blake Elliott, who just uh, refuses to, to go down, going out with a Big bang on his terrific career. Elliott, second in Division III history in catches and touchdown catches, fourth in receiving yards. Just a terrific career for him. I do not want to underestimate the value of Ryan Keating to this football team. Remember, he calls most of the offensive plays. And uh, it's amazing just watching him work in practice and, and how efficient they work. They don't spend much time in the huddle. He'll get up to the line of scrimmage. He'll call a play. And that's a credit to the coaching staff of St. John's and getting him ready to call plays and knowing the system and the scheme. Elliot in motion. Still working as he gets the ball on third down. Keating, in fact, didn't even attend school last spring. He worked at his family business in Minnetonka and almost didn't come back. And uh, came back, he had the injury last year, coming back from shattering his arm. And, wow, what a way to go out. Doesn't get any better than an undefeated national championship season. The offensive line of St. John's has done a great job, too. They have close to what? Got to be over 200 yards rushing the ball against a very talented Mount Union defense. You got 228. Yeah, 220 yards against a, a, a defense that's just, you know, strong all year. They averaged, they only gave up on average, 97 yards a game on the ground all season, and they've given up 228 to John Gallardi's team on the ground today. So St. John's okay. takes its final time out. Ryan Keating and St. John's, a minute 58 away from winning its fourth national championship. Take a look at the previous three. We have to go back to the old black and white days. In 1963, they beat Prairie View back in the NAIA championship, 33-27. Two years later, they took out Linfield, 33 to nothing, still NAIA in their lone Division III championship. They beat Towson State from Maryland, 31-28 on a late field goal. And now we're looking at number four. The uniforms haven't changed much. Huh? They added a strike to the pants. That's about it. John Gallardi might be wearing the same coat he wore back in 76, though, though he kept the, the big toughy coat home today. He went to his backup coat. Charlie Carr on fourth and one, but a direct snap to Josh Nelson. First down, Johnny's, and they should be able to run out the clock. It's a smart call. Why would you do is you don't force that. Mount Union had 11 guys up there for the block. Just a direct snap. You're going to take a knee. You're going to run time off the clock. Great call. Not, it's no, no indication of trying to run it up or rub it in. It's just a safe, conservative call. If you get the first down, fine. If not, no big deal. Right, they're holding on to the football and should be able to kill the clock on this and kill the longest winning streak in college football history of 55 games. Before they lost 99 to Rowan in the playoffs, as Nelson gets the ball, they had won 54 straight games. So this is just a machine for Mount Union. Oh, I guarantee you not many of those losses even before then have been by 18 points. Turnovers and running the football. Football never changes. 
And a standing ovation now as Blake Elliott comes out of the game. What a terrific career for the senior from Melrose, Minnesota. Goes out with a, a stunning game, 110 yards on the ground, 51 yards worth of catches. He had a huge touchdown run. As Tice gets the ball, and of course Elliott running with the, a very badly strained hamstring. Good shot.